So in this video, I'll show you how you can uh, call a function uh, on a contract A from a contract B. So you're going to see how, how two contracts can interact with one another. This is how easy it is to uh, make so smart contracts can interact with one another. So I have contract A and contract B. And I'm going to, contract A has, let's give you a quick overview has a Bitcoin price and you want to get this price from the contract B and for this so to, to make any interaction between smart contract you need two things the first is the contract ABI so to call any contract you need its contract ABI this is basically uh, just it tells you all the functions that, that you can call them on the smart contract and the second thing is uh, its address and here in the contract B, we are storing the ad address of the contract A. We are just passing the address in the constructor. And then we are, this is the interaction part, part, calling this function. So here we are just making an instance of the contract A by just saying A. This is going to be, this variable is of type A. Let's give it, uh, let's initialize this. And we're going to pass the contract uh, the address of the contract a and here and now we can call any function on this instance we can say dot bitcoin price but this wouldn't be possible if we didn't have the contract a inside this file so i'm going to show you uh, later in another example how you can call uh, how you can interact with contract that you don't have uh, within the same file so let's deploy the A contract, then let's choose the B contract. And when deploying B contract, we need to specify an address in the constructor. So let's copy the A contract address, paste this here and then deploy. And there we go, we have two contracts here. So if we go into the A contract and check out the Bitcoin price, you're going to see it's 100 by default. And in the big contract, the Bitcoin price is zero. But if I call this function, it's going to make an instance called the Bitcoin price function. And we're going to assign this to our Bitcoin price variable in the big contract. Let's click on uh, now the Bitcoin price has updated to 100. But let's say what if your the contract you want to interact with is already deployed on the testnet and you don't actually create the actual contract. So here I have two contracts to illustrate how you're going to interact with uh, in this scenario. So you have the Ether price uh, contract. This is basically tells us the price of Ether and you can increment this by 100 by just calling this increment function. Then I have the read ether price uh, contract and this is the contract I, I am creating and let's pretend this is deployed uh, and you don't have the actual code. You can actually, to interact with any country, you can just take this code on the blockchain or whatever, whenever it is on the ether scan and just paste it inside. But you can also do uh, interact with it by using interface. So an interface, you just uh, create this by uh, the interface keyword and you, we're going to use this to interact. Uh, this is basically like the ABI for our contract. This basically specifies the functions that we can call on this ether price contract. And this ether price, uh, we can call this only one function, the price of ether that gets created, created automatically because uh, the price of uh, because this is a public variable so uh, let's give you a, a quick overview of this read ether price contract this is the contract we're creating here instead of the constructor I just have a function that I need to call to set the address the contract address that we're going to interact with and again I have a get a price function that I'm getting the price of ether from the other contract so let's deploy, uh, save this, compile this ether pri price contract, deploy this, and then uh, uh, compile this read ether price contract, deploy this as well. Or maybe I should choose the uh, actual contract and not the interface. 
so now both of them are deployed let's go uh, here and we want to copy the first contract address and just set it up in the second contract and then if I call the get price function we're going to interact with the with this first contract by using this interface and now our price of ether should be set so if I go up here I should get 2000 and this is also a 2000 but if I increment it on the second contract it's going to be 2100 and now if I say get price it should get the updated price so if I click now it should be uh, 2100